assist hooks for top water lures. There's a bunch of different reasons you'd want to use a uh, assist. The first one is sometimes with a setup where you've got an inline single or a treble hook that's attached directly to a split ring and then onto your lure, is as the fish turns and potentially rolls over, say in the wash or something, the hook can bind against the, sp the split ring and then bind against the lure and like lock up which means that it provides a lot of leverage and it can kind of pull that hook out of the fish. So an assist hook basically lets it just freely turn um, and you know, it, it creates a really solid connection to the fish because that you're always pulling against a correctly orientated hook. The other reason is it allows you to run quite heavy gauge hooks and you can weight match a treble really well. Um, so you can get a really good action out of your lures um, without running a treble hook, which means you've got Less hook points, it's safer for you, the fish don't get damaged because there's not another treble swinging around. Because in, uh, assist hooks hang slightly lower underneath the lure, your hookup rate's actually better. It, you know, the fish doesn't have to get as close before it actually gets pins in it, whereas like an inline single or a treble might be sitting kind of up there somewhere. This is a little bit lower, so it provides a bigger separation between the lure and the hook point. The fish doesn't have to get as close. Um, and it's hooked up. So I'm just going to show you how I tie my assist hooks. For hooks, I generally use the BKK Deeps. Um, they're super strong, super heavy gauge, and they've got a really awesome uh, coating on it that just doesn't seem to corrode like other hooks. Um, these ones are crazy strong. They're rated to about uh, 300 pounds um, for an 11 bar O. They're awesome. They make your lures look really cool because the, the hooks just stay mint. So the solid rings, I use number sevens, BKK, also rated to about uh, 300 pounds, 150 kilos. You don't need to really go any bigger than that. It's kind of nice to have them, you know, a bit smaller. Um, it's a bit sleeker through the water, um, but you still want it to be super strong. Then for assist cord, I use the BKK's hollow core assist cord, 420 pound. It's the heaviest one they use but it's still really supple. So I tie my smallest assist hooks for you know, 160 mil lures up to 240 mil lures or 300 mil lures with you know, all sorts of different size hooks all on that same cord. Uh, really good abrasion resistance and, and super, super strong. Um, you'll also need a piece of shrink tube, six mil in diameter, so that it's gonna fit over top of your heavy gauge hook and over top of the assist cord once, uh, nice and snugly once we've tied that up. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our assist cord. There I use, uh, you know, probably 300, just a little bit more than 300 mil. Any more than that, then you're just wasting it. Any less than that, you're not going to have enough to finish the knot. So just over, cut that. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our solid ring. We're going to get our assist cord, and we're going to just double that over, like so, and pinch the end of it. Get the end that we've just pinched put that through the solid ring to make a loop and then we're going to put the two tag ends back through that loop and we're going to snug that up all right so you can see that's kind of loose so what we're going to need to do is get our split ring pliers and hold on to the solid ring and the cord get a good grip on it and pull it kind of as hard as you can. If you don't snug these up as you go, um, you basically can end up with this really long tag end at the end when you pull the whole assembly together, um, you know, everything comes loose then, and you know, it, it doesn't look awesome and you might end up with an assist that's longer than what you're anticipating. Like this, see how it's kind of come all loose at the end here? Um, that's because it wasn't correctly snugged up, but if you do it as you go, then you don't get that issue. Now that that's nicely snugged up, we're just going to add a couple of half hitches to this to provide our tag end. So you see here, this is what I'm gonna call the top of the uh, of the knot. So we've got this loop coming over the top of, of that connection as opposed to kind of no loop there. So that's the top. What we're gonna do is do two half hitches. So we can get this bottom strand, go over the top and through. Pull that up nice and tight, snug it up, okay, so now we're back to the top of our knot and we're going to do the opposite, so we're going to go underneath and through and snug that up. So the first time we went over the top to start with, second time we went underneath, and just get your 
splitter and pliers hold onto the solid ring. Just give that a good pull, get it pulled back that way. We're just going to make it nice and tight. Right, there we go. So, here we go. Right. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to get our hook, have it in that orientation. Okay, and we're going to take our two tag ends down through that eyelet together. So down there, like that. Okay, so here is where you set the orientation to of the solid ring to the hook. So you want to make sure that it's in this orientation, not in this orientation, so that it runs correctly against your lure. So that's the orientation, so it's going to be like that. Pull this uh, these tag ends so that this bit of the knot to start with is hard up against that eyelet. Um, you want it to be hard up against it because there might be a little bit of slippage and stuff. If it's loose to start with, it's going to be looser, you know, once you've snugged it up. So what we're going to do now is a series of half hitches with both of these tag ends. So hook in this orientation, we're going to go these two ends over the top and back through like that snug these up. But these ones are really important to get really nice and tight. Snug these up. Okay, and then we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to go underneath and back through. Okay, get that nice and tight. Pull with your split ring pliers. Alright, like that. That's basically what we ended up with um, there. So, so that's that's halfway done. So we're going to do that same step one more time. So we're going to go over the top and back through. Snug that up. Grab your pliers. Make it nice and tight. Pull that way. Pull back that way. Right, and then we'll go underneath and back through. There, pull there, pull back towards you. So that's nice and tight now. Okay, and nice and tidy. So now the only thing that we need to do is trim those tag ends and shrink wrap it. So we're just going to trim them. I kind of leave maybe like 10 mil. Um, you don't want to trim them right up uh, close to the knot. Um, for a couple of reasons, because you don't want them to pull through, but also if you leave them a bit longer, it's easier to get your shrink wrap over. Um, so I'm just going to leave about 10 mil. Cut through there. All right, so now we're going to do our shrink tube. So the length that you want is basically so that the shrink tube covers the tag ends and finishes about halfway up the eye so that it covers the knot, but it's still at a narrow point to stop the shrink tube slipping off once it's all uh, once it's all shrunk down. Um, some people go all the way over top of the eye. Um, I kind of just go to halfway over the eye. I just think it looks a bit neater. Um, so I'm just going to measure about there. Cut about there. Okay. So now we're just going to work that over, starting at this end. Push it over. Can kind of be a little bit fiddly, get those tag ends in there, and then I kind of just twist it. Twist, twist, twist. Sometimes you might need to stuff a couple of those little ends of those knots in there. Eventually it'll just kind of work its way up. You want it to be really tight, so it's worth the, the fiddliness of getting a shrink tube that's quite tight. And almost there. Out almost, almost there we go. Okay, there we go. So that's about how far I push it up. Then we just get your heat source. You probably should use a heat gun for this, um, it's a little bit less harsh, but I just use a little blowtorch because I don't have a heat gun at the moment. So, but if you're using a, a lighter or you know something with an open flame, um, just be really careful how. You know how much heat you apply you don't want to burn the assist cord underneath or burn your shrink tube so as soon as it starts to move i kind of take uh the heat off it so 
just work your way around the shrink tube. Get it nice and snug down. Okay. And that's basically the finished product. Um, nice and tidy. Um, you know, it's, it's super strong. We've snugged everything up as we go. Um, so you're not really going to get any extra play out of that. That, that tag end is going to stay about the same length as it, you know, as what you set it at. Um, and super durable, and you can make them with really nice hooks and whatever hook you want. Um, so yeah, there we go. All right, thanks guys. I hope you found that really useful. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see, um, and just get out there and go have a cast. See you next time.